Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Saturday, August 7th. The time is 4.04 p.m. And the temperature right now is around 24 degrees Celsius. And that was Blue Young Station. That was the southbound Line 1 platform. And this here is Hayden Street. And as you can see, we have overcast skies. And the plan for this one is to head north up Young Street here, up to Blur Street East. And from there, I'll walk east along the entire length of Blur Street East, which is about three kilometers, three kilometers or so over to Danforth Avenue. That will be the intersection of Danforth and Broadview. There's a look. Southbound Young. And the lineup at Chick-fil-A. There's a chance of thunderstorms today between 4 and 5 p.m. I do have my umbrella with me. And here is Blur Street East. And that's a look to the west. And west of Young Street here, it is Bloor Street West, and east of Young, it's Bloor Street East. And I attempted this walk a few weeks ago on a similar day as this, and I think it was a Saturday as well. But my external audio didn't record. And the internal audio on this DJI Pocket 2 is not very good. So I ended up playing that video in the background of a live stream. And I thought with the gloomy weather, there's probably not a whole lot going on at street level in most of the city, so why not come attempt this walk again? I'm guessing there's a Blue Jay game this afternoon. I've seen quite a few people wearing Blue Jays gear. rain is probably why these patios aren't too busy. This is Church Street, just up ahead here. And line two of the subway does run along Bloor. So I think this walk will be spanning four subway stations. Bloor Young, where I started. Next up will be Sherburn and then Castle Frank. 
and then we'll be finishing up around uh, Broadview. I see some umbrellas out already, although I only feel some rather light drops of rain. It's not really concerning right now, but perhaps it'll start coming down. There's a look south down church. starts to come down. I've got my hand over my camera right now. I'm going to run for cover and grab my umbrella in a moment. spot to take cover but it'll do. I'm just gonna put my camera down. Hello. I'll probably end up cutting this part out depending on how it looks. There's the umbrella. I want to make sure I put my zippers away in such a manner that they won't be clanging into each other while I walk. All right, I don't see any raindrops on the camera lens there. And of course, it pretty much lets up <laughs> right when I get the umbrella out. And I continue east on Bloor. There's a look at the Manufacturer's Life Insurance Building. was built back in the 1920s, I think. I think the original structure was just five stories. They are now known as Manulife. And there is St. Paul's. I finished up a walk recently at that building that went past the studio building. That was one of my hidden Toronto walks. another empty patio at Finn McCool's. And this here is the north end of Jarvis Street, which has been renamed Ted Rogers Way. After the media mogul passed away, they renamed this stretch of 
Jarvis. Once you go south of Charles Street, you'll be on the Jarvis itself. At the last few blocks, we're known as Ted Rogers Lane. Here's where Rogers itself calls home. This would be their corporate headquarters. 333 Bloor Street. They're a large telecommunications company that has somehow become a media conglomerate. end of Mount Pleasant Road. So it starts about a block to the south of here. And that heads north up into Midtown. And I think it ends several blocks north of Lawrence. You could also jump onto Mount Pleasant by heading down that off-ramp there. And here's where the National Post and Toronto Sun are located. And I also think this building is where the Indian consulate is. So it's not uncommon to see protests and that sort of thing up front in this area. The National Post being a national newspaper that was created to rival the Globe and Mail. And the Toronto Sun is a local rag. Although it's always had a pretty good sports section. Pretty good amount of rain now. So I'm glad I kept the umbrella out. And here is Sherburn Street. And you can enter Sherburn Station once I cross the street here. The area just to the north of here is a rather affluent Rosedale neighborhood. And just on the other side of Bloor there is Rosedale Valley. And on the south side is the less affluent St. Jamestown, to be kind. Well, it's really not a bad area. There's Fire Station 
And there's the eastern entrance to Sherburn, uh, Sherburn Station. And there's also a tunnel underneath here that pops you out on the other side. There's a neat bridge you can cross and take that into Rosedale. Looks like that guy's getting some shelter from the rain. At least he's trying to. the Church of St. Peter and St. Simon the Apostle. Some remnants of what used to be Cabbage Town in this area. This part of Cabbage Town was cleared out to make room for St. James Town. And we're now walking in the bike lane, and the bikes have been pushed out onto the street. I'm assuming this construction is due to the condo going in right here. It looks like they're putting in a nice wide sidewalk. That will be welcome. Here is Parliament Street. So you could take this south down to Lakeshore. And that'll go through the Cabbage Town, Regent Park, Moss Park, and Corktown neighborhoods. It'll also take you right past the distillery district. And what's interesting here is that if you're heading north on this part of Parliament Street, you cannot turn left onto Bloor. I remember finding that quite odd the first time I encountered that on my bike several years ago. I'm not really sure what the reason for that is. It looked like there'd be any danger to configuring this intersection so northbound drivers could turn left. And if they are heading west, they could always just do what those cars are doing and turn along Howard Street there. 
There's a guy on a fat tire bike. I don't think that's an electric bike. And you can hear a subway train rumbling by. The line two trains run through that elevated tunnel, I guess you could call it. Well, it seems weird calling a tunnel elevated. There's Rosedale Valley Road. And a look to the west towards the north end of downtown. That Honda decided to slip out of the left turn lane into one of the middle lanes. I think it ended up turning left anyways. And I used to like this view a bit more before these new condos went in. They seem to kind of block part of the view and put up a bit of a wall. The CIBC square towers kind of do that as well when you're driving west along the Gardner. They completely block out the CN Tower at one point. Turn around and get one more view. It's a little better from here. You can see Rosedale Valley Road below. In the fall, that view is quite nice as all the trees are changing colors. Well, the leaves on the trees. Castle Frank Station. I see those NCM electric bikes everywhere. That's what that guy was riding. I think their models are the Moscow and the Prague. Just here on the left is Castle Frank Station. That would be the bus loop there. And here's Castle Frank Road. Right there is Castle Frank Crescent. That's an extremely nice road. There's a lot of very nice homes on it. Waiting for the light to change here.
the line two of the subway, which is underneath us, opened back in 1966. And it runs pretty much just along the north side of Bloor. And Danforth Avenue, once we cross the viaduct here. And coming up is the Prince Edward Viaduct, often referred to as the Bloor Viaduct. And it looks like this off-ramp that stems from the Don Valley Parkway is closed right now. There seems to be some kind of maintenance going on. This viaduct is what they call a truss arch bridge. It was completed back in 1919 and it spans nearly 500 meters. And line two of the subway does run just underneath the roadway here. There's another level below it. And you'll notice a sign here that says Dis Distress Center. As unfortunately, this viaduct was a bit of a suicide hotspot. And that's why they installed these barriers here. They were added back in 2003. And the barrier is called the Luminous Veil. And I think it consists of 9,000 steel rods. I think the total cost was around five million. I might be wrong on that. I'm just trying to remember facts here. Sometimes I look things up as I'm walking, but I've got an umbrella in my left hand. And I think Snowdrop Park needs to go in just under this spot. There's a staircase right behind the secondary school, which is right over there. And that leads down into the valley. And from there, you could access Bayview Avenue. And it's a good thing I'm on this side, as there'd be no view to be had on the south side due to that construction going on. So we are heading over the Don Valley. And there's Bayview Avenue, and we'll be passing over the railway tracks, as well as the Don River and the Lower Don Trail and the Don Valley Parkway. That's Bayview Avenue and the rail tracks. There's the river. And it smells absolutely awful right here. And there is where I came from. That is Young and Eglinton off in the distance. It's amazing how there's so many tall towers over there, yet you can only see a couple from this vantage point. And once I get to the other side of the viaduct, Bloor Street ends and Danforth Avenue begins. And then that'll take you through the Plater Estates and then Greektown. And then East Danforth. And eventually Danforth Avenue will curl up north and lead up to Kingston Road. That'll happen once you get to Scarborough. And just 
blast off in that direction there is the Chester Lookout. You get a pretty neat view of the skyline from there. Although, from here we can't really see a whole lot. Kind of a CN Tower just peeking out a bit. At night, this bridge is often lit up and it looks quite neat. We'll have to come back at night at some point. Maybe on a live stream. Maybe on a stream with my new e-bike that is arriving on Wednesday. I'm hoping to get that put together and up and running right away. Probably be anxious to get up and record a video on it. And here's an interesting sight. The Don Valley Parkway is closed. I think it's closed all weekend for maintenance. Sometimes it's referred to as the Don Valley Parking Lot. There's a view south towards Lake Ontario. And a look back towards the financial district. But this is a really neat site. There's usually an opportunity once a year to ride your bike on it. to look up towards the evergreen brickworks with my neighborhood again looming in the background and that neighborhood up there is known as the Plater Estates here there's a way to find Riverdale Park East so I'm thinking of making a hidden Toronto video on that where I find my way into the park we end up in a wooded area and there is a pedestrian bridge at one point here's a plaque commemorating the Prince Edward viaduct Now on Danforth Avenue. So I was planning on heading up to Broadview Station, which is located just north of Broadview here. But I think what I'll do instead is end the video. And then go find myself some dinner as I'm quite hungry. On that note, I hope you enjoyed this walk along Bloor Street East. 
starting from Blue Young Station. Heading east for about three kilometers along the entire length of the Bloor Street East portion of Bloor. And finishing up here at Broadview and Danforth Avenue. There's a look east along Danforth. And the subway station is just to the north of here. I think I'm just gonna head across the street there and grab some dinner. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. And I also have an Instagram account. Thanks for watching guys and I will catch you on the next one.